you can see, I have absolutely no makeup on my face right now. Well, except for my eyebrows. I'm gonna do a separate video for that. So anyway, getting onto the video, you can see I don't have the best skin, but it's not the worst. And I know that a lot of people are gonna relate to this. Um, you can see I have some scarring around here and here and then just a few breakouts on my chin. They're normally quite hormonal, um, but it is what it is. But yeah, I thought we'd do a full coverage foundation routine today just on how I cover up my acne scarring because the majority of this is scarring, which is annoying because it's... I don't actually have that many spots, they're just red marks to be honest and I know a lot of people suffer with this as well so I thought why should I be embarrassed to come on camera looking like this because more people are going to relate to me that way um, so I know how self-conscious people can be and how self-conscious I have been in the past and I and I still am to be honest. I'm just going to get straight on to the video. I really hope it helps you so let's just get started. So obviously you just want to start with a clean face and put on your normal moisturiser whichever works for you but obviously I'm using this one today. So onto foundation I'm going to use my MAC Fix Fluid Foundation in the shade NC37. So when you're applying foundation I always would recommend doing a thin layer first and then building up in areas where you feel like you need it most because some people uh, say for example like myself I have pretty clear skin around this area and here and then the majority of the breakouts are here obviously I'm not going to put a full sort of layer everywhere because I don't necessarily need it but I always just build up in areas so I will just dot this around and the best way I find to apply foundation is using a sponge this is the Real Techniques I think it's the Miracle Complexion sponge something like that I'll link it down below this gives amazing coverage because it really packs on that product in that specific area rather than moving it around like a brush so I literally just pat that in all over because I find sometimes when using a brush you just end up moving it around and it's not going to give you the coverage that you want okay so that's obviously just one thin layer so if you've got pretty good skin you could just leave it at that because um, the MAC fix fluid is an amazing coverage and a little bit goes a long way so you won't need a lot if you do have pretty clear skin but if you've got some blemishes like me you could go in with a concealer. I actually don't really use a concealer in these sort of areas. I prefer to layer up my foundation there just because I feel like it sits that little bit better and sometimes a concealer can look a little bit cakey over those blemishes. So what I do, I will just squirt a little bit more onto the sponge and I will literally just dab in the areas where I want a little bit more coverage so just a little bit on the forehead and then I mainly work it right onto the chin oh and I forgot to mention this sponge is slightly damp as well because it will pick up any excess um, foundation and it will shear it out a little bit and because we're using a sponge it's gonna add a lot more coverage that way um, but just by dampening the sponge, dampening is that a word? Just by wetting the sponge it will just make your foundation look not as heavy if that makes sense. And also by using a wet sponge you can get away with going a little bit heavier with the foundation. And sorry if you can hear the wind, the weather is horrendous right now in Wales as always. I nearly got blown away you're happy with the coverage you can then go in with concealer and all those sort of steps so because I'm going to be showing you um, a little bit on like contouring and highlighting I will go through that st those steps as well so before concealing I like to use more of a color corrector or more of a pinky tone concealer but basically what a pinky tone concealer or corrector will do is it will counteract the dark tones underneath the eyes and then for my concealer I will use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer 
in the color NC30. So this is slightly lighter than my skin tone. So this is also gonna add coverage and also highlight that under eye area. And just dab that in. So when you add a lighter concealer, it will instantly lift this area. And if you've got quite a wide face, you don't wanna bring your concealer all the way along here because it will give the appearance of a wider face. Obviously, if you've got a skinnier face, then you can get away with taking it all the way that way if you wanna give the appearance of a wider face. So it does depend on your face shape. You know, contouring isn't gonna be the same for everyone. Everyone has different face shapes. And then I just take the exact same sponge. So again, it's slightly damp and I use the pointy side and I will just start to blend that in. And you wanna use dabbing motions rather than sweeping because again, like the foundation, you wanna press it into that under eye rather than sweeping because you wanna focus the coverage there rather than moving it around. If you do want to go for a super highlighted look, but this one isn't too bad, I, th I think it's around £13.50, I could be wrong, but this is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighting Pen in Light Boost, but this is great for highlighting like the cheekbone for more of that matte highlighter. So for example, you can just pop it on the cheekbones and down the bridge of the nose. So when it comes to highlighting, like I said before, you're not always going to highlight in the same areas that I highlight. So say, for example, if you've got a really skinny nose, you won't necessarily need to highlight your nose because when you're highlighting the nose, you're bringing that area forward. And same goes for contouring the sides of the nose. If you've got a skinny nose, you won't really need to do that because the reason you contour the nose is to make the appearance of a thinner nose, basically. So it all depends. So again, I'm just going to keep on using my sponge because I feel like it literally just melts that product into the skin. So when it comes to contouring, you can obviously use cream or powder depending on what sort of look you're going for, what your skin type is. Obviously, if you've got quite dry skin, cream contour is gonna work best for you. Um, obviously, it doesn't really matter too much and cream contour will obviously look that little bit more natural because it really blends into the skin. You can obviously do both. I will do both techniques today so you can see the different options. I will say if you do have quite like severe acne or you do have a quite few blemishes around that area, then you might wanna skip um, the cream contour because when you've got like highlights on or like a sheen going on, then you wanna avoid that if you've got any texture on the skin because any like shine will just draw attention to the bumps on the skin. Again, with like using shimmery, shimmery products, um, you will just be enhancing that area. So you wanna keep your skin as matte as possible, um, just to sort of like smooth over that texture. I'm just gonna use this really old foundation palette and I'm just gonna use the um, medium tone um, foundation, which is this one here. So all I do is I just take it on my finger so the warmth of your finger will really blend it in and I will just pop that round the hairline. So by putting it on the forehead you're giving the appearance of a smaller forehead. Obviously if you have quite a small forehead you don't necessarily need to do this step. Um, you could obviously put a little bit there just to add a bit of warmth to the skin. For the cheekbone contour you want to follow from the top of the ear downwards so you can get a brush or a pen and it's just that area there and I always say to do it slightly above your natural cheekbone because you don't want to bring it too low like that. Okay so when blending out your contour I always find it best to use a synthetic brush because um, synthetic hairs just tend to blend cream out that little bit better so all I do, I'm using this round top um, brush from Zoeva. It is the Silk Finish 102 brush. So just using this um, side of the brush here, I'm just gonna start to blend that in. And you can kind of suck your cheek in if you want. And then I will just start to use circular motions 
to really blend it in and you always want to do this before powder okay so you have to be quite careful when using cream contour and like blending over areas where you may have acne scarring or blemishes because you will find just for example when I blend over that area I have a couple of acne scarring and it does sort of move the foundation slightly which is why I don't tend to really do cream contour so for contouring the nose if you did want to or if you just wanted to enhance your natural nose shape or to make it skinnier what you want to do is I just use a small brush from this is MAC 242 and all I do is from the natural bridge of the nose is I just start to bring it downwards so if you've got quite a wide nose or if you feel like the end of your nose is quite like fat looking or whatever then you can literally just do two little lines at the very tip of the nose and that will give the appearance of a slimmer nose there and then just with my finger I will just blend out the edges like so I am now going to set my foundation in place so I like to use a couple different powders because I wear quite a heavy coverage foundation and I like a full coverage I don't like to go in with a heavy powder which is why I always use a translucent one and a loose one because it can be that little bit more finely milled and you can really like buff it out as well so the two that I like are the Laura Mercier um, powder in translucent and also the Illamasqua one which is also translucent as well so uh, the one that I'm going to use today is the Laura Mercier one mine's almost running out if you're, if you're going to contour with powder I will always recommend using a powder in those areas where you will contour and especially with the cream contour if you want it to really last then setting it with a powder um, just so it won't move so all I will do is I will pat powder over the areas where I'm going to be applying blush and bronzer contour that sort of area and this will make your bronzer blend in so much um, smoother whereas if you put powder products over cream straight away that are darker than your foundation it can end up looking a little bit blotchy a little bit patchy and just get rid of any creases underneath the eye before you set that found sorry where you've set that concealer so I'm not going to do any of that like baking or anything because I don't know like it looks amazing in photos but for an everyday sort of like in reality it just doesn't look bright in person obviously it's personal preference but all I do is I pat a little bit of powder okay right so for powder contour um, obviously so many brands do these at the moment um, like literally every brand is doing this sort of contouring palette for example I have the Revolution Ultra Contour palette which is like this one here it's an amazing amazing contour palette for the price and um, so like I was saying earlier you do want to go with more of a cooler toned contour powder if you want it to look a bit more natural but you don't want to make it look too grey because on some people it can just look too muddy and too grey basically obviously we want it to look natural but for my personal preference I actually don't mind a warmer contour I think that may be because I'm a little bit more tan so I can get away with it looking a bit more on the golden side but for example if you're quite pale then I would go in with more of an ashy undertone contour powder so for example this one in the Makeup Revolution palette this one right here is a nice cooler brown so you can see compared to that one it's a little bit cooler in shade if you're a beginner with contouring the fluffier the brush the better because if you go in with say for example a brush like this so it's very sort of defined it's quite it's not too dense it's still quite fluffy but it's got that sort of straight edge to it this is the luxe face paint brush by zoeva the 109 
and it's really good for like getting that really chiseled contour like I said if you're a beginner this can be quite hard to get the hang of and you want to blend it out so I would personally recommend a brush like this so it's quite fluffy it's slightly tapered at the end so it's good for getting in that area so I will list like all these brushes down below so all you want to do is just get the tiniest little bit on there first less is more and you can build it up so I'm just gonna dust the excess off and in the exact same area as the cream contour you just want to go back and forth up and down I'm just using really light motions so if you feel like your contour has gone a little bit like choppy all I do is get a little bit of my powder and I will just tidy up the edge and just sharpen it slightly and then I will also go around the edges okay so once you've done all of the contouring and that sort of thing so I like to just go in with a bronzer to warm up the skin and this is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Dark and I like to use a sort of fluffy brush that is slightly tapered at the end this is the MAC 239 I think I can't really see it's rubbed off but I will just dab a little bit off tap off the excess and I will put that right above the contour and more on the cheek if that makes sense and I will just go back and forth so the fluffier the brush the better I think when working with contour powders and bronzers because it will just blend it out as you apply it and then like I said I just like to bring it around the hairline just to warm up the complexion and it gives that nice sort of like sun kissed sort of look to show you you can this brush is great for contouring the nose so whatever's left I sort of like tense my nose if that makes sense and I will just run it round or down the edges just to sharpen it up and all that does it just sort of follows my natural nose shape um, and it will just define it slightly just making it look that little bit more <sighs> slimmer and then so for highlighter I think I'm gonna use the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal which is this one here something quite similar is MAC Soft and Gentle um, so to apply highlight I'm going to use the Luxe Powder Fu Wait one sec. <laughs> the Lux Powder Fusion Zoeva brush in 134. So it's nice and tapered and fluffy as well. So it's great for getting that nice precise application. And you can just apply that to the top of the cheek. So you want to apply highlighter anywhere where you want to bring forward. Basically anywhere where the light naturally hits the face. So top of the cheek on the brow bone, top of the brow if you want to, down the centre of the nose. But if you do apply quite a lot, the trick is, I promise you, you need this in your life, is to use MAC Fix Plus after your highlighter. So just spritz a little bit on all over if you want. That will literally just make your highlighter merge into the rest of the products because sometimes you'll find when you put a highlighter on it sort of just sits on top of your skin and you can really really see it and sometimes it will cling to any texture that you have so by doing this like I said it will just merge everything together it will settle down any powders on the skin and just make everything as one basically as I said you can go in with your fix plus if it wants to spray and just spray the shit out of your face basically so yeah that will just make your skin look really nice fresh dewy just all the powders merged into one um, if you are oily you can still get away with using this I just wouldn't use it as much after I would just spritz a little bit just on either side of the cheek 
and sort of stay clear of the centre of the skin because obviously it does add moisture back into the skin. Um, so yes, let's let that dry. Okay, so that is the finished video guys. I'm really sorry I have a feeling it is super, super long, but I just wanted to cram in as much information as possible. I wanted to be, I wanted it to be really in depth because I had so many questions asking me about it. I feel like it went really quick and I, I feel like I've hardly even said what I wanted to say, but I really hope I explained everything. I mainly just showed you my techniques and some little tips and tricks that I feel work best for me. I really hope it helped you, um, even if it helps just one of you. Please like this video if it did help you. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you thought. Any requests, you are welcome to put them down below as well. Please subscribe if you are new here. So that is everything, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my new subscribers as well. Um, until next time, you'll see me in my next video. Bye.